In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen. Reverend Fathers, dear sisters, dear friends, we honor today one who in his life was never considered to be anything more than an ordinary good man. A simple artisan, a crafter of wood, possibly of stone as well. A man from a very humble, nondescript village, the village of Nazareth, a very small village. It's thought at the time of our Lord to have been about 275 residents there. A man who, in the eyes of the world, never really did anything very remarkable. And yet, what praise from Holy Mother Church, who honors him as the greatest saint after Mary, his spouse, and after the child that called him father. Why? Because of what he was far more than what he did, although what he did was significant, the care that he took of the Holy Family was the most sacred duty that's ever been entrusted to anyone who's walked this earth. But it's what he was, and the church sings his praises. Joseph, most just, most chaste, most faithful, most patient, most strong, a truly manly man, a truly holy man, a man whose soul was deep, and because of that strong, the liturgy of today likens his soul to the tree that's planted by the waters with the deep roots that draw in the moisture. And so even if it's time of trial, drought, storm, the tree is strong, verdant, and bears great fruit. That was St. Joseph. St. Bernadette of Siena says, if those who live with great saints also become holy, what must have been worked in the soul of Joseph during the years he passed with the man-god and his divine mother? You can imagine Joseph living with Mary and Jesus every day, working side by side with our Lord when our Lord was a boy. I was reading an author who was speculating with a number of scholars saying that it's likely that the shop of Joseph was not, was not actually in Nazareth because it was too small of a village to bring much work, too remote, and there was very little wood in the area. So it's likely, it's speculation, but it's interesting to reflect on. It's likely that he walked to a nearby town that was more significant in size and where the resources were greater, and that there he set up shop. And of course, at a given point, he would have been taking Jesus with him on his way to the shop each day. We can imagine what that walk must have been and like time with our Lord. We think about them perhaps returning at the end of a long day's work and it's already dark because it's winter and they're looking up at the stars. What must have been their conversation? Did they say much? Perhaps not. Perhaps it wasn't necessary. St. Teresa of Avila says that St. Joseph is the guide for souls in the ways of prayer. We don't have to say much. You realize that in all of Scripture, there's not one single word of St. Joseph recorded. Not a single one. He said little, almost certainly, because he was reflecting 
on the great mystery of his life, of the great mystery of the two hearts that he cared for and loved with all his being. You know, it's interesting in the gospel of today's Mass, it's about when Our Lady was discovered to be with child. And our and St. Joseph, although he did not understand, he still did not doubt her. He knew that she was good, that she was holy. He knew what a treasure she was. And the fact, he decided he had to back away. This was too sacred. There are saints, fathers of the church, who believe that he knew, understood at a given point before the angel, that she was the mother of the Savior who would be born of a virgin. There are others who don't think so, who reflect on the fact that he must have been filled with confusion. And yet he did not doubt her. He would put her away quietly. He would back away. But he did not doubt her. He knew her and he knew her because he was a man attuned to the things of God. And heaven was able to speak to him because of that. How many times do the angels speak to Joseph and he hears, perhaps our guardian angels speak to us as many times and we never hear. He was a man of prayer. And so heaven was able to speak to him. He's a model for us of the interior life. As he is a model for us of service of God. Joseph was created for Jesus and Mary and for nothing else. Like Jesus, he came not to be served, but to serve. And he did so faithfully, quietly, without complaint, and more than that, with joy. Why? Because he loved. He loved them. And he was a real father to that family, a real head to that family. He was responsible for the two most precious beings this world has ever seen or ever will see. He cared for them, protected them, whatever the cost. You know, sometimes we read the scriptures and we sort of just take it for granted after a while. We know the story. We know how the angel appeared and said, flee, take the child and his mother and flee into Egypt for Herod wants to kill him. And we go, yeah, yeah, I know that story. And we don't think about what it must have really been like. Herod wanted to kill the son of Joseph. The son of Joseph's spouse. He had to flee. Now, go, get up in the night. Leave everything. Go. Go where? Go into a foreign land. But who's there? Just go. God will take care of you. Leave everything. Whatever the cost, he took care of those souls. They were precious to him beyond anything else. And more than taking care of them, and this is something to reflect on for us too, he led them. He led God. He commanded God. And God obeyed. That's another thing that we simply take for granted. We don't really think about what those words mean. Joseph found his sanctity in commanding God because it was God's will. There were trials as we've seen and they were great trials. But he must have faced them with a great peace because he knew that God and the mother of God were with him at all times. And see, all of these things, dear friends, are very important because they're all true for us too. We were created for Jesus and Mary and no one else and nothing else. 
we find our sanctity in serving them, in protecting Jesus in our soul, in being generous towards him and his mother, whatever the cost, and of bearing trials in our efforts to serve them. But they are always with us. And no matter how difficult things might seem, no matter how upside down, no matter how it might seem like the powers of darkness are taking the upper hand, God is God. And He is there. And there He is the mother of God and she is there. We are never alone. We are never left without the help of heaven. And so we can be peaceful. And so you see, Joseph is more than simply our protector, our provider. We want to honor him today. Because of that, we want to acknowledge his generosity in taking care of St. Mary's Academy and College. Miraculously, now for over 35 years. But he's more than that. He's more than just our provider who looks after us in that way. He is our guide in the interior life and He is our guide in Catholic life and spirit. And we want to look to Him for that. And so I, I thank you for being here today to honor St. Joseph. It's an extra effort. It's not obligatory. It's a holy day for the Universal Church, but not in the States, unfortunately. I thank you for that. I commend you for that. But what I encourage you to do is to look to St. Joseph in a more profound way than simply take care of our family in the sense of the financial side of things and so on. No, show us what we are meant to be. So that at the end of our life, we too might be considered seen by God to be just and chaste and faithful men and women and children of patience and strength, truly Catholic souls. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.